Barney friends. Happy Halloweeny. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever had a um, live video on Halloween morning. I can't remember. I'm really excited. Um, I got so excited this morning about Halloween. I have remember I showed you those three boxes of googly eyes that I purchased from um, not Ravelry from Amazon that came in last week. I had them sitting like one, two, and then one on top. And I walked past the front door because I heard a noise out there. There was just a car that was loud. But anyway, I walked past there. And my elbow hit the top box, and so I've got googly eyes all over the floor. I just kept right on walking. I'll pick them up <laughs> when we're done here. I just didn't want to take the time because I'd have to crawl all over the floor. <laughs> yeah, that's just par for the course for me. <laughs> well, we got a lot planned for you in our video today. I'm going to talk a little bit about dog safety. I'm going to also show you a new yarn I got in from... Uh, premier yarn. I actually used it in yesterday's video. I absolutely love it. And then we're going to talk about some some scary questions. <laughs> and then, of course, what's new this week? So we got a lot to talk about today. Um, but before we do all of that, I want to discuss something with you. Um, but we need to clink in. <laughs> Anybody drinking anything scary today? I've got my trick or treat cup. Trick or treat. I do not know where I got this cup. Every time I show it, I have someone say, where did you get that coffee mug? I don't know. I've had it for probably 30 years. It might have been something one of my kids got when they were in elementary school or something. I don't know. <laughs> I've had it forever. And I just love it because it's just different. It's just the, the jack-o'-lantern full of candy with trick or treat. I love it. It's such a cute cup. I ordered in a pumpkin shaped like jack-o'-lantern cup, but it came with a warning that said that it might have lead. And I thought, well, I'm not gonna drink out of that. So I just set it in my cabinet as decoration. I'm not gonna touch it. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I thought, oh, this is fun. I'll just order this in and can't use it. <laughs> All right, now I do wanna talk about one other thing before we get started. Um, I've had a lot of messages saying, they're not being notified when I'm doing a live video or you're not being notified on YouTube when I have a video come up. And so I want I just want to remind you they're changing a lot of the algorithms and stuff. And so if you want to see my videos, it's real important that you subscribe to my video to subscribe to my channel. It's real important that you like videos go into my youtube channel and like videos and then also when you subscribe there's a little bell and i don't know why you have to jump through all these hoops to do this but hit that little bell it's not enough just to subscribe and like you need to do those things but you've got to hit that little bell in order for them to contact you now another thing is when i'm doing my live video usually the day before i get it all set up and then it will say, um, if you go to my YouTube channel, at the top it says live. You can click that tab that says live, and it'll show you my videos that are getting ready. It'll show you all the ones I've already done. And then it will show you one that um, I'm going to do for today. And there's a little tab that says notify. Hit that notify, because then it will notify you when it comes on, okay? I, I know it's... It's confusing. It doesn't make sense. I don't know why they keep messing with the algorithms or whatever they're called. I'm not techie, so I don't know a lot about that. But if you're not seeing my videos, you need to subscribe to the channel, like as many videos as you can, and hit that bell that says, yes, I want to see her videos, okay? <laughs> I guess you got to say it three times. <laughs> Anyway, I feel really bad because um, I do, I get them every single day. I get messages that say I wasn't notified. I didn't know. And they apologize like it's their fault. And it's not your fault. It's it's not. It's something going on with YouTube and I don't know what. Okay, so I thought I would clear that up with you real quick first. Make sure you smash that like button, okay? That's what they call it. Smash it. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Now, <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit about dog safety. Um, when it comes to Halloween... We always talk about it at the 4th of July because of all the fireworks and stuff. But one of the things that we don't think about is on Halloween, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's And there's people dressed up in costumes. My dogs get freaked out when people come around when they're just wearing a hat, especially a baseball hat. They bark at them. I don't know why. Plus, my dogs are super duper blind and can't hear real well. And, you know, they're old. But I really want to encourage you of a couple of things. You're going to have people ringing your doorbell over and over again if you're giving out treats and candy and stuff. So make sure your dogs are in a safe place. Put them in the bedroom on their bed, or if they're ones who are kennel trained, put them in their kennels to keep them safe. Because we're going to be up answering the door a lot, and they're going to get frustrated and get scared. Okay? I don't, a lot of people say, well, I just lock them in the backyard. They like the yard. If you have a nice tall fence, that's fine. But I think dogs just get really, really scared with all the people. They're not used to all the, the kids laughing and having fun. And nobody's doing anything wrong. They just are not something that they're not used to. The other thing I want to talk to you about is the candy. I know that when, you know, my kids would come home, we'd dump it out and we'd check to make sure everything was safe. So let me encourage you not to, to dump it out like on the living room floor or something. Put it up on the table or on a counter where, to go through it because those things can be toxic to dogs. Too much sugar can be toxic. Also, um, chocolate is toxic. And then there's gum that is terrible for dogs that they can get a hold of. And they'll just snatch it. They're fast. They'll just snatch it. The other thing is... Um, that it's called xylitol. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that wrong. It's in a lot of sugar-free, but it's also in a lot of candy now and things that have peanut butter in them that are, are made from peanut butter. And so I buy an all-natural peanut butter that is only just nuts and nut oil that doesn't have anything in it. Read your labels because sometimes I do give my dogs peanut butter because it's really a good protein for them. Um, but I'm very careful to read the labels because candies, this xylitol thing, um, chocolates, they can get a hold of this stuff and it can be super toxic. And a lot of times, um, uh, bigger dogs, they'll be all right. They'll make it through, but little dogs, especially that, that would just, that'll kill them if they eat chocolate and stuff like that too much. And you'll end up at the vet. Okay. Yes, we want to keep our kiddos safe and we want to go through that candy. Just don't do it on the living room floor where they can run in and snatch it. Um, I've even had, when we had a bigger dog many years ago, we had a big black lab. Her name was Angel. Um, um, she was so fast. She would run in and grab granola bars and try to eat them through the wrapper. And we had to be very careful with her. Um, because she wanted to be wherever the kids were. She wanted, She was one of those dogs that thought she was a human. Well, all of my dogs have thought they were humans. They don't think they're dogs. <laughs> Anywho, I wanted to cover all of that. Okay, so let's do our best to keep our pets safe. Now, I don't know of any cats that usually get into candy. I know they can be scared if they're outside cats, if there's a lot of people in their neighborhood. So just keep that in mind, you know. We want to have our families and our kids have a good time, but we also want to keep our pets safe. All right? Okay. I wanted to cover that real quick because that's important to me. All right. Um, that's true. Uh, uh, Teresa's, ta Teresa's talking about a lot of people don't do door to door. Where we lived in Colorado, we, they didn't do door to door anymore. D they, they didn't allow it. And there were a lot of parties with the churches. There were trunk or treats with the schools and the library and different things. And they're doing that here also. But they do trick or treat door to door here. Okay. Um. <clears throat> The other thing I really want to encourage you is um, so a lot of people, when they have teenagers come to their door, they won't give them candy. And I look at it this way. Those teenagers could be out causing trouble, but they're not. They're just trick-or-treating. They're all dressed up. And so go ahead and give them some candy. Make their day. And you never know those, those, seen, those you know, big kids. They might be special needs or, and don't understand, you know. So try not to be... Um, 
Um, I, don't, I don't know what the word is, too judgmental or whatever when you get teenagers come by. Just give them a candy or a toy or whatever you're giving out. Tell them trick or treat and to have fun. You know, because, um, you, right, like I said, you don't know if they're special needs or they're just wanting to have some fun in a good way. Okay, so moving right along. I just wanted to cover a lot of those things because it's important to me. All right, now um, I'm going to cover some questions I call these scary questions because I get them a lot and over and over and over again. And I probably covered them a hundred times, but I want to talk to you about them again. Okay. Now, I've got four of them. All right. Now, I, I've been, I love to use different size yarns in a lot of different projects. And when I design a pattern, my hair's tickling in my neck. I think it has electricity. When I design a pattern, I usually design it for a particular weight of yarn. And I'll get all the time, do I have to use that exact weight of yarn or that exact yarn? You don't have to use the exact yarn, but it is very important that you do use the right weight because it is going to make a difference. If I made something with a chunky number six, and you want to use a medium four, you're talking about two completely different weights of yarn, and you're not going to have it come out right. And then you're going to get frustrated because it didn't work. So you don't have to use the exact weight of the exact yarn. In other words, I might have used Burnett number six, and you want to use Red Heart number six. That's fine. Most of the time, the weight is what matters, not the yarn. Okay? All right, that's scary question number one. They're really not scary. <laughs> scary question number two. Do I have to use the crochet hook size that you used or the exact crochet hook? <clears throat> the answer to this question is yes and no. And I say that because when a pattern calls for a particular crochet hook, do a little bit of a test with it because we all have different tension. Not attention. Yes, I have a short attention span. <laughs> I do. I'm like a toddler. <laughs> but really, when a pattern calls for a certain size hook, it is important that you um, use that particular hook. But if it's coming out too big, you can always go down a hook size or two. If it's coming out too small, you can always go up a hook size or two, or you can loosen your tension or tighten your tension. And those are things that you will learn as you go along in your journey in crochet, okay? But it is a good idea it, to use the, the same weight of yarn and the same crochet hook that is called for in a particular pattern, okay? All right, question number three. Do I have to use the exact fiber? Okay, and this one's a little bit tricky because a lot of times I'll make a um, coaster. Let's just use coaster as an example. And I'll make it out of acrylic yarn. Well, a coaster made out of acrylic yarn is going to protect the surface, but it's not going to absorb moisture. So you might want to use a cotton, which is totally fine. That, if you're going to be serving drinks like soda or something that's going to sweat, that cotton coaster will absorb the moisture. The thing you have to remember about that is when that coaster absorbs the moisture, that moisture is going to get on the surface of what you're doing. If you're using like a wood table, it could cause um, some sort of a, um, what do you call that, that white stuff that, that, that ruins the wood. So keep that in mind also. But the reality of this is if you prefer to make that hat out of cotton and I made it out of acrylic, that's totally fine. But do your best to use the same weight and the same crochet hook or it's not going to come out the same, okay? And again, you can adjust those crochet hooks if it's coming out too big or too small or loosen and tighten your attention. Okay, now this last question is one I get constantly. I probably get it almost every day. Why do I have to measure? Okay, so a lot of patterns don't tell you to measure, and I don't say that in all my patterns either, 
But measuring is so important because if you're making, let's just use hat again as an example. If you're making a hat and you want it to fit a 22 inch head and you're using the exact yarn and you're using the exact crochet hook, but it's coming out really small, grab your tape measure and measure it. And that will help you adjust because if it's coming out too small and you go up a hook size and you measure it and it's not quite enough, you can always go up a second hook size or loosen your tension. All right, measuring, I say this probably I've said a hundred times. When I was first learning how to crochet, there was a lady in my church that, that was also helping me. I learned out of crochet, or, um, crochet books from the library mostly. I, I learned to knit on my own. I learned to crochet on my own, mostly from library books when I was like, I don't know, 12, 13. Okay, so there was a lady in our church there where we were going to church in Tulsa that just loved crocheting. She was so good at it. And one of the things she said to me over and over again is measure as you go. If you want that blanket to be a certain size and you've chained, you know, and, you're, and you take into consideration a trim and it's way too small, then you need to adjust it. If it's coming out way too big and you want it to be smaller, then you need to adjust that, all right? And that's where a tape measure is very important. I have them all over my house. Everywhere I work, I have a tape measure, okay? So the bottom line is this on these four, ooh, scary questions. <laughs> you want to try to use the same weight of yarn and the same crochet hook that a pattern calls for and adjust from there. Now, another thing about fiber is if you make, say, a bag and you've made it out of wool and then you throw it in the wash, it will felt, okay? And sometimes we take that into consideration because we want it to felt, okay? Cotton washes differently than acrylic. Alpaca washes differently than bamboo. So keep all of those things in mind when you're deciding which yarn to use, okay? But the bottom line is this, you do what works best for you. <laughs> That's what I always say. Don't get all hung up on, but she said use an A hook and I used a J and I love it better. She's wrong. You do what works best for you. We all have a different tension. I tend to be more of a looser crocheter and a tighter knitter, and I don't know why, but that's how I am, <laughs> you know. You might be a tighter crocheter than I am, or even a looser one, you know. That's why I always say I'm a loose hooker. Because <laughs> I stitch loosely, and I don't know why. I still hold, you know, the yarn the same way and everything. But if you are someone who crochets really tight, your tension and your gauge is not going to come out the same. And that's why it's a good idea to keep your tape measure everywhere. <laughs> okay, I, I, every time I go into Hobby Lobby or Joann's or um, even uh, Michael's and even Walmart, if I walk past the yarn department and they've got those inexpensive tape measures, I'll buy one or two. I have them all over the place. Plus, my grandkids love to play with them and sometimes break them. <laughs> But I have them everywhere. I have one in the car, and I always put one in my purse because tape measures and measuring everything that you make is so important, okay? All right, those are the four scary questions. <laughs> They're really not scary. I just, I just, you know, I get these questions, these four questions over and over and over again, and... I do love stitching with lots of different weight yarns. I love them all. Even the crazy, fuzzy, weird yarns. I love them because it's a challenge. And I love a good challenge. All right. So, all right. What happened this week at Posh Pooch Designs? Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is the masks. <laughs> we did this fun little mask. Um, got my glasses on so I can't. <laughs> it, 
It makes a great last minute um, costume. Throw on a sweatsuit and a mask and you're a superhero. <laughs> it was one of these things where um, I had someone contact me a couple of weeks ago and and I had written a pattern for a mask. Oh my goodness, a long time ago. And she said she couldn't find it. Could I do a video on it? And I said, well, I might try that. So I thought it'd be a really great, just fun extra video. It's a super easy mask you can make. It'll fit just about anybody. So I can get this so you can see it. There we go. And it has these ties so you can tie it around the back and it will fit just about anybody. Let me get my glasses back on because I can't see. Okay. <laughs> All right, and the other thing is, if you want to make it really super fancy, you could add gems and beads and all kinds of fun things just to make it super fancy, you know, just for fun. Or do it with a sparkle yarn or have a, or use a sparkle thread along with your yarn as you stitch. So it's a really super easy pattern, but it's super fun as well, okay? And if you're looking for a last minute um, costume, I got you covered. Now, just a reminder, all the patterns that I show you that I put out there are my designs, and I'll, and I'll put those links down underneath this video, but every pattern comes with, of course, the YouTube video, and there's always a link underneath every video that has a written pattern with pictures for you, okay? So if you're one of those people that really likes to follow along, the written pattern's there. You like, you like maybe a still picture so you can kind of get a good close look at it. It's there also. And another thing about YouTube is if you feel like I'm going along too fast, pause the video. You can also slow the video down on your side. So if you want to see the stitches a little bit slower. Okay, so there's lots of things that you can do when you're watching that video. You can stop it and pause it. You can make it louder, make it quieter and you can slow that video down, okay? Just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> All righty, now the other thing that we did is that spider that's right there behind my back. Can you see it? That is my spider pillow. I called it the sweet, cute, adorable, squishy, but never scary spider. It's really fun. It's made out of blanket yarn. Um, the color is called tie dye -ish Lavender, and I really liked it. I bought it from, it's from Burnett uh, Yarns, uh, Yarn Inspirations, and the yarn is really cool because it doesn't have like, it, um, it doesn't cut off the colors. It just kind of blends from one to the other, and that's where that tie dye -ish, um look comes from. And then I used those big old eyeballs, and I've got them right here. I wanted to show you these again. They're 24 millimeter or 0.94 inches, and you get two of them for $1.99. I don't know what they are at other places. I picked these up at um, Hobby Lobby, and I got two sets because I want to do something else with these for Valentine's Day. Don't ask. <laughs> So anyway, they're really super easy to put on and I show you how to put them through the stitch so they don't fall out because we don't want kids to get a hold of those and get them in their mouth. And I do say that if you're going to give that spider um, to a child that might put it in their mouth, you can always crochet some eyes, you know, some little circles that are white with a green center or something if you feel more comfortable with that. Okay, but that, that was super fun to make and it's super easy you just make the body and head together and then you sew them together and stuff it and add the legs. It's just so, so fun. Now, if you'll notice behind that spider is the um, spider web. I was planning on doing a video on that, but it just didn't get done. <laughs> so what I did is I put the link for the spider web underneath that video along um, if you go to that video and go and look underneath it in that description box, I put a link to the video where I made the original spider web. So if you want the spider web, it's there. <clears throat> okay, I don't, what's the step? I don't know what that means. Anyway, um, oh, that's who you are. Sorry. <laughs> I thought you were asking a question. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the last thing we did was yesterday. Um, let me grab stockinette here so she can show you 
how it looks. This is our, isn't this cute? This is our bamboo chunky ear warmer. And I made it with the elastic band in the back. That way it gives you a little extra stretch. You can put your ponytail through and make a bun or not use it that way at all. It works for long or short hair, but I want you to see the stitches. They're really pretty. We did what I call a mock cable, okay? And we did a couple of rows of where you're doing front post, back post, depending on what side of the work you're on. And then in the center there, let me pull that apart a little bit, we made the loops that look like cables. And this yarn is made with anti-peeling bamboo chunky yarn, okay? And let me show you this yarn. It is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to switch to my other camera real quick. Um, here's a couple of them that I got in. From, they're from Premier Yarn, and it's at one of their new yarns, and it's so soft. Um, I love that they put this on here. It says, like new, wash after wash. How many times have we washed something and it comes out and it's all fuzzy and has all those little um, balls on it that we call pills? Anti-peeling. It's exclusively from Premier Yarns. Okay, it's a bulky number five. It calls for a K hook, which is a 6.5, but the headband that I made, I used a J, just a six millimeter, because I wanted the stitches to be nice and close because I wanted that headband to be warm. Okay, and let me tell you a little bit about this yarn. I, I jotted down some notes because I just, when I started working with it, I just love it. Okay, this one's called Terracotta. This one's called Blue Raspberry. Isn't that pretty? Okay, I got two of these and two of these. I've got a, another item I'm going to make with those. It comes in 18 colors. It's 80% anti-peeling acrylic. 20% rayon from bamboo. So what you're getting here is a good sturdy yarn from the acrylic. But look at this sheen on here. It's beautiful. It's silky and soft. So you're getting a soft but strong yarn, and I love that about this yarn. Okay, each ball has 131 yards, 3.5 ounces, and again, it's a bulky number five. Bulky number fives are one of my favorite yarns because it sounds funny, but it's a little thicker than a four weight, but not quite as thick as a six, which is why I like it. <laughs> and then, I mean, it's like, yeah, that's the truth. It is, but <laughs> that's why I like it because it's just a really nice size for making scarves and hats and cowls and things like that. Okay, machine washable, lay flat to dry. Um, and then, of course, you different um, your knitting needles and your crochet hook size. Okay, this is a brand new yarn. And I just, I just really love it. I think you're going to enjoy it. It has 18 different colors. All right. Now, if you want to go and look at it, I'll, I put my affiliate link down underneath this video. And I always just put Premier Yarn link. You can click that link. When you get to the Premier Yarn site, just click the tab that says Yarn. And then the thing will come down, a drop-down tab, and then it says New Yarn. Click that tab because they have a bunch of really cool new yarns. Um, they have this anti-peeling. And remember the other day I talked about the poppy and then the thick uh, basic? Both of those yarns are beautiful. And I already have some projects going with the a project going with those that will be out in a week or so. Okay, and <clears throat> they just super-duper have uh, just, they have some super duper new yarns that I just love. And I love the whole line of the anti-peeling, peeling, anti-peeling, not peeling, <laughs> not peeling like orange peels, <laughs> anti-peeling like pills. You don't get the balls on it. I love that yarn. And I don't, I don't know how they do that. I don't know if it's the process of how it's um, made on the, on the machines and stuff. But it is just a super soft yarn. And this one in particular, making this um, this um, ear warmer, it was so much fun. It, 
the way that it slides on the crochet hook is important to me. If it's splitty, I don't like that. If it's like stiff and, and, and scratchy, I don't like that either. This yarn was um, um, strong, but smooth. Kind of like me. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyhow, I think you're really going to enjoy making this particular ear warmer. And for the guys, for the girls, for anybody. Long hair, short hair, whoever wears a ponytail or a bun, you know, it, it, it's just a really great versatile headband, and I'm probably going to keep it for myself again. <laughs> I always say that, and then I end up giving them away, but anywho, <clears throat> that's our yarn of the week. Um, I wanted also to let you know some things that are coming up, and then I'll let you go. I know it's it's we've been on here half an hour. Um, if you've missed out on the beginning of the video where I did the information on keeping our dogs safe, when we're done here, go ahead and watch the beginning again. That's just a really important subject to me because I have little dogs, okay, little chihuahuas. Okay, now, what's coming up? Today is, is the last day of October, so we've got November and December to get Thanksgiving-type stuff, holiday stuff, Christmas stuff. And so I've been working on a lot of designs <laughs> since summer. <laughs> Because, you know, I do everything way in advance. Because, according to my husband, I'm over-organized. But that's the way to be, right? Right? Tell me I'm right. Come on, come on, come on. Tell me I'm right. <laughs> I am so bad when it comes to organization. If somebody asks me to do something at the last minute, like, Hey, Sarah, we're getting ready for coffee. You want to come visit? I'm like, no. It doesn't fit into my schedule. <laughs> Actually, usually I do, and then I grumble about it. <laughs> I'm working on not being so organized. Anyway, we've got a lot of fun things coming up. I'm trying to do some things that can be used for, you know, both Christmas and Thanksgiving, but maybe not. You know, use it for other times of the year as well, as well as some fun Thanksgiving things and some fun uh, Christmassy holiday type things as well. And I know that not everybody celebrates the holidays. You know, um, Thanksgiving is an American holiday, and so a lot of people, I think Canada has already had their Thanksgiving. I can't remember now. But anyway, my hair has electricity in it. It's driving me crazy, sticking to my neck. Anyway, um, but it is fall. And so I'm doing some fallish, Christmasish, <laughs> holidayish, and then things that are not any of those things, just winterish type things. And it's really fun. I've really been enjoying it because for me, the, the most fun that I have is either in the designing or in the live video. So, I mean, I, I love doing regular videos. I love doing tutorials and all of that stuff and writing out the patterns. And I love when the tests come back and they're good, you know, but actually the most fun is the designing part of it. And then when we get to do these live videos, right, where we get to chat. I love reading through your comments, so please comment a lot. I love hearing your thoughts and your ideas. Um, Canada is the 9th of October. Thank you. The Canada Thanksgiving is the 9th of October. I have friends, crochet friends, that are in Canada. And they I always see their posts where they say, Happy Thanksgiving in Canada. So <clears throat> I, I couldn't remember. Okay, so... Well, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to grab one more quick drink of my coffee from my trick-or-treat cup. <laughs> I think every year on Halloween is the only time I wear my spider shirt. <laughs> Isn't this hilarious? I added a little pumpkin for a pop of color. I love it. Um, I was going to dress up in like a Halloween costume this year. It just didn't happen. <laughs> So I had, I made the mushroom hat that looks kind of like what's called a toad, which I don't know. To me, a frog is a toad, sort of. But anywho, um, that one got taken by the grands. <laughs> so I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm still going to have fun. I'm going to go pick up all the googly eyes I dropped on the dining room floor. So I'm ready for Halloween tonight. Okay, so. Anybody got any Halloween jokes before we go? Nothing from you, Kim? No Halloween jokes? Oh, I know the one. What do you call a, ha a hot dog bun? It's a Halloweeny because there's no hot dog in it. <laughs> I think one of my grandkids told me that one. <laughs> All 
Alrighty, so thank you all for being with me today. Have a wonderful and happy Halloween and be safe and keep your kiddos and your pets safe, okay? Well, I'm going to let you go on that, and I'll see you next week.